Legends tell of six Toa heroes who fought evil and faded away into history. But legends never die and they shall rise again. Now the Toa have returned to fight evil. United they stand, destined to find the masks of power in order to fulfill their duty to protect the island of Okoto. This is Bionicle Week. Day 2. Kopaka, the Master of Ice, and the Protector of Ice. Hello, this is Shannon here, and welcome back to Bionicle Week. Today we'll be taking a look at Kopaka, the Master of Ice, and the Protector of Ice. Now, if you did not see yesterday's video, I kind of went over the whole idea of the line, uh, talked about price points and such, and everything about the basics of the line. Um, so go back and watch that, and then come back uh, if you have not seen that. Or if you already know how the line works, by all means keep watching. Uh, but that information is important so you understand how this all works out. Um, from here on out I will be reviewing the figures, not so worried about uh, the other little details. So anyways, as you can see we got Kopaka here, he's a $20 Toa set. Um, nice artwork on the front here, showing that he has a silver skull spider, so different colors nice. I can see the region of ice back here. Um, he is 97 pieces, so that's pretty cool. Um, and on the back you got just general information about stuff I'll show you. So yeah, he's in the same size box as uh, Tahu. And the Protector of Ice here is in the same box as the uh, Protector of Fire. And you can see, you can see the ice region uh, back here. And you got Protector of Ice, and there's a Skull Spider. There's actually two shown on the box. He only comes with one. Uh, he has 62 pieces. So that's pretty neat. Anyways, the boxes are relatively the same, just modified for each character. So let's move along. Alright, so here we have Kopaka. Just like Tahu, I did want to show off the instruction book. Uh, specifically, I just kind of wanted to show the comic that was included here at the front. Because it is kind of neat um, to kind of show you how things work. What's interesting about this one, however, is that it does show a red skull spider attaching to Detector of Ice's face. And there's currently none of those in the line. Uh, maybe they'll come with later sets uh, in the series. But here we have Kopaka. Now, Kopaka is quite tall. He's, you know, as tall as Tahu, basically. Uh, they're all around the same height with the Toa. Some are a little shorter, some are a little wider. Um, but, as you can see, Kopaka is a lot more armored. Um, his armor looks a little bit bulkier, more to brave the snow uh, and ice. You can see his legs down here are quite armored up, which is good if he has snow up to the knees. Um... It, I like how the Toa have these adaptive armors of sorts, um, because you can kind of see he is he is prepared to brave the ice. You can see his nice gold armor up here. Uh, his mask looks so close to the original uh, Kanohi mask of Kopaka that I almost say it's the same thing. It's slightly modified, but it is very, very close. Um, I do like that. I also like how he does have a hole here where his eye is, and the light does shine through. Um, just not as well as I think Tahu does. He's got a nice printed chest decal. Looks really nice. Uh, now he does have stickers here. I don't like stickers because they peel over time. But, uh, I don't know, I guess I couldn't uh, print that there. But Overall, the figure looks quite nice. I love the use of clear plastic on his arms. Gives him that nice ice look. Uh, and same with his lower legs there. And, of course, his articulation is fantastic being a new a Neo Bionicle set. So he's got the ball jointed head, the shoulders, the elbows, the wrists, hips, knees, and ankles. So he's got a wide variety of poses, and he does have a gear system. Uh, each one does. As you can see back here, he turned this gear, and this allows for his arm to raise or lower. Just kind of swings his one arm. So much like the original Kopaka, only one arm swings. Um, but, you know, you can kind of see the gear system here with the double gear allows for things to be held in place better. Also, these uh, shoulder pieces are articulate as well, which is pretty neat. Now, in terms of weapons, he has a couple. First of all, we have his spear, um, which you can see here uses a Rakshi staff piece, which is pretty neat. Uh, it attaches in two pieces here and here like that. So now you got this nice spear for him to hold, skewering some skull spiders, and that's where the arm action comes in. And then on the other side here, we have this big old shield. 
uses the same uh, blade-like pieces that uh, Tahu's swords and surfboard used. And we can give that to him here. And now he's got his shield and his spear, and he's good to go. So overall, Kopaka looks really sweet. Um, I like the idea of him having this big shield, you know, help him brave the wintry weather of the ice region. Um, I, I like the adaptive armor look. I definitely like the look of him a lot better than Tahu. I feel like the armor's uh, better placed. Uh, the legs, the armor around the legs look a lot better than having chest plates down there. And overall, the figure just looks quite awesome. Uh, the, the colors mesh really well. Now, of course, he does have an alternate configuration for his weapons. Um, so let's just remove his shield here. We'll leave this little peg inside. And we might as well swap onto his golden mask here. You can see he's nice and gold. So we'll power him up. And we'll take the these pieces here. These will split into skis. So one for each leg. Like this. Split apart. We'll just put this piece back here for now. Another good place for it. So it does peg into his feet here. And now he's got a pair of wicked skis that look like blades and probably can slice up skull spiders as he's skiing down the mountain with his staff out front ready to ready to win. So pretty neat. I like the uh, the ski configuration much like Kopaka Nuba had. Um, and overall he looks really cool. Uh, it's just... This peg has nowhere to go, really, and that's kind of the only problem. But overall, Kopaka is really, really nice. Alright, so here we have the Protector of Ice. And much like the Protector of Fire, this guy has no elbows. Um, let's just get the articulation out of the way. It's the same as the Protector of Fire, so you got the neck, shoulders, the wrist, elbows, the hips, the knees, and the ankles. Um... But other than that, this guy is built differently. He doesn't have the three-part chest armor. Um, he looks like he's more snow-equipped. I mean, his feet look pretty nice. Um, other than that, he's a lot bulkier in terms of armor design, uh, which is a pretty neat aesthetic to have. And like I said before, the masks on the protectors are all the same. Just this one's all winter-themed. It's molded in clear blue plastic, painted over white. So, yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, the problem with the protectors is there's not really much to say about their base bodies, um, because they are smaller sets. But he does have two weapons. First of all, he has this awesome shield weapon. Now, it can be either held at an angle or straight on, but it is a shield that is also a buzzsaw. And if you turn the gear back here, you can see it spin. It actually turns nice and tight. So this way you can have a spinning laid shield. It's pretty cool. Um, it sometimes works better as an under slung weapon. Um, I don't know which is official. I just kind of go with what I want because it's Lego, you think. Um, but there's that. And of course you have his Gatling gun, which I went over the problems with this in the last video. Um, and if you want to see it firing, just go take a look at the protector of fires uh, part. But you, you can see here, it's, uh, it's kind of like that. And it's got this nice little ice piece. His weapons make a lot more sense than the Protectors of Fire did. Um, those just... The, the fire things didn't make any sense. This makes more sense. He's got a Gatling gun. Uh, and he's got a shield. So he can be blocking Skull Spiders and blasting them at the same time. But other than that, there's not really else, much else to this guy. Um, he is pretty neat, though. I like the look of him more than Protector of Fire. But his lack of elbows does hurt him overall. Now, much like with Tahu and the Protector of Fire, Kopaka and the Protector of Ice can combine to form a power-up mode. So here is the power-up Kopaka. Much like power-up Tahu, the Protector stays intact, uh, only losing their weapons. It's pretty nice, actually. Um, I like having a little, uh, little Protector guy just kind of chilling out. Um, in addition to, you know, providing a new mode here for Kopaka. That was actually a more complicated build, mixing uh, parts up here. The uh, staff got to completely dismantled and reassembled into this nice staff bow saw thing, which is pretty neat. And he also gets the Gatling gun, which is pretty cool. Um, it gives Kopaka a couple extra uh, weapons here, but it does leave behind some pieces like 
the shield is still intact. Uh, this piece and and the end of the staff and you know, one of these. But uh, nice part about all that is they all plug together, so you can have just one piece. Hook it on here. Call it good. Or you can give them the skis. It's up to you. Um, but yeah, uh, the the power up mode for Kopaka is a lot better than the one for Tahu, um, and it doesn't leave the protector looking like he's missing something off his shoulder. Plus, handheld shoulder, handheld cannon over shoulder cannon any day. Plus, buzzsaw. Anyways, so that's the power up mode. I would be remiss to not mention the skull spiders. They're silver now instead of green. The other video I went into them more deeply. Nothing's changed, just the color. So overall, how are today's sets? Well, Kopaka Master of Ice is awesome. While he does have some things about him that don't work out too well, the uh, spear not being able to stay together, uh, some of the posing options are a little restricted uh, because you can't dual wield the spear. Um, it's complaints I've heard online, but not anything that's really bothering me. I kind of like him holding it almost like a trident, just skewering s skull spiders. Uh, but other than that, he's a fantastic set, and I personally like him more than Tahu. Uh, now, the Protector of Ice, I like more than the Protector of Fire. Uh, this little guy here is kind of awesome. Uh, mostly because of his weapon loadout. His design's kind of standard, but he's got, uh, you know, an underslung Gatling gun and a saw blade shield. That's pretty sweet. Plus, it kind of fits with, he's got a shield, he's got a shield. And they look like they're prepared to go through an icy tundra, which is where they would be living. Um, plus, silver skull spiders. Those are neat. So, overall, I'd highly recommend Kopaka and the Protector of Ice. I'd say that he's the best protector so far. But he's not my favorite. We will have to stay tuned, as tomorrow we'll be taking a look at the Master of Earth and the Protector of Earth. Till next time, be sure to check out HeroTaku.com for all your LEGO news and more, and this is Sandat saying, goodbye.